The official theme song of Star's Rec Problems. He requests that I play it for his appearance today. This bitch lost so sorry. Oh, and I know that it was the old boss. You broke my nose. So far is it wrong? Cause this old lunch is so sorry. And I went that car. It was the old boss. All right, guys. The legendary day is upon us. Stars wreck problems. Welcome to the live stream, my friend. How are you doing out there? Good, my buddy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> no, um, you know, obviously you're an anonymous uh, person, figure in the uh, poker world, and so you decided that you were going to wear a mask today, correct? That is true. I'm so, wearing uh, the balaclava. Okay, I still don't know what that means. I didn't know what that meant when you told me a couple minutes ago, and I still don't know what that means now. But, uh, you know, thank you for joining. Yep, thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I'm very happy to have you on, you know. Yeah, it didn't want to have you on for a while because, you know, typically when people think of Star's Red problems, they think of a, um, hold on, there was someone in that, that posted a, a really perfect description of you okay. in the, uh, on the high stakes thread on 2 plus 2. And I thought, you know, he really summed you up, or uh, at least who you are on Twitter, quite well. So for people that might not have much of an idea of who you are, which is weird. Why would you be watching this live stream if you didn't know who you were? But, <laughs> so this person suggested that you are, you were homophobic, racist, sexist, misogynist, and hateful, and one of the worst people he's ever had the pleasure or displeasure of being around in his whole entire life. Would you confirm yeah. or deny that? I, I I have to deny that a little bit, but that came from Ivanhoe, and that guy's like the biggest fucking bird ever, didn't it? I think it was Ivanhoe, right? No, no, you. That was from a guy named Anonymous Help on uh, in the high stakes PLO BBB for an N two plus two. Oh, that guy's a nobody. He doesn't know anything. It's fine. So, would you say you're a somebody? I would say I'm somewhat of a somebody. I wouldn't say I'm a nobody. I thought he was like good geezer. Well, yeah, you know, I, I think that you've, you've, so you've, you've cultivated this Twitter account called at SARS Red Problems. Yeah. Not quite spelled that way. SARS Problems without a, an E. If someone, there's probably been people listening to this at some point in time that might not know who you are. So how would you describe yourself on Twitter? Uh, my Twitter personality? Um, I would say I'm a realist. I keep it real. If things bother me, I talk about it. Um, I'm like an open book, I guess. Anything that bothers me, I'll talk about it, whether it's girls or poker players. That's about it. I don't know. I am who I am, I guess. It's not a very good answer, but whatever. Yeah, dude. That wasn't a good answer at all. But what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? Who, who, who are you? Tell us who you are, kid. Who are you? Explain. I'm, I'm Star's Break Problems. I'm in my mid-20s. I'm located in Canada right now. Uh, no, hold on. Let's start over. Okay, let's pretend we're on Twitter. Let's not pretend we're on the live stream. Let's pretend okay. we're on, let's pretend we're on Twitter, and you're you're posting. Say, Kid Poker just tweeted at you. One of your favorite people on Twitter, Kid Poker tweets at you. Hey, stars rec plums. Why don't you? I don't know. He says some weird Kid Poker shit. I don't follow him. I don't know what he says. But well, how would you tell people out there? Tell them tell them a bit more. We we want to know more. People want to know who are you. Tell us more. I'm <laughs> not boring. Don't be boring. You you like to go on Plenty of Fish. You like to go on Tinder. You like to message girls. You like to have sex with girls or try to have sex with girls. You like to post about how you try to have sex with girls from Plenty of Fish on Twitter. You like to post about how you try to have sex with a girl from Tinder on Twitter. You like to talk shit to everyone. You like to call Kevin McAfee. I don't know what you call that guy. You and that guy are weird. I'm thinking you guys should have sex or something. I don't know. You two like... I think you guys hate each other so much to the point you actually like each other. Like, no, like, man, that whole beef was just so stupid, like. So what happened? Okay, so people that don't know, you and this guy, Kevin McAfee, I'm not quite sure too much about him. I know he had a girlfriend who <laughs> he had a girlfriend. <laughs> girl so he had a girlfriend who 
who enjoyed other men at the same time. And you know, I I'm not saying that's a bad thing in a for someone to do, but that's a poor quality for your girlfriend to have. So, you know, I guess you two got into it. He he sent some girl after he to fix. I don't know. Tell people what happened. All right. Uh, it all started a long time ago when he first broke up with Liv Bury. Now, Kevin McPhee is like, he's a very well-known, like, tournament player, uh, both on... I don't know. Um, How well-known is he? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything about him, though. I'd say he's, like, I'd say, like, moderate to very well-known. Okay. Moderate to very well -known. Okay, go ahead. Both, both online and live. He's a good poker player. I'll give him that. Like, I, I can't really argue with his results. He has, like, millions of dollars in cashes or whatever, so he knows what he's doing. Wait, are you but, like, sure? Are you sure? Wait, are you sure he's not in makeup or or steak? You know, you know what I mean. Who knows, man? With those fucking live tournament regs, like they're all in fucking makeup, every single one of them. So. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, so he was dating Liberty, and uh, they broke up. And Kevin was like such a little bitch about it. He like started pulling out on heart out on Twitter, and was like being disrespectful to her, and like <laughs> um, so. He became kind of like a target of mine. Uh, I, I just let him have it. I just said, you're a big fucking piece of shit and whatever, and you shouldn't treat women like that. Like, fuck you. And he ended up blocking me. So then, like, a few weeks ago, someone tweeted something, and because uh, Kevin has me blocked, I don't, and I think I had him blocked too because he, like, just really tilted me, but I unblocked him because I'm not a little bitch. And, uh, so I saw a retweet with his name in it, and I just made some comment like, yeah, like, Kevin's a huge fag or whatever, something. And then, like, I didn't hear anything for, like, a couple days, and then uh, there was this, let's just, like, a girl in Montreal I was, like, friends with or something. Actually, no, hold on. Let me back that up a little bit. He, uh, he sent his girlfriend to talk to, like, an acquaintance of mine, let's say. He sent on, his girlfriend to, to talk to someone? Yes. Is this is this is this this does this girlfriend enjoy other men too, or is this a, do you not know? Are you aware of that? I do not. I don't know this girl. She's like a nice looking French girl from Montreal, whatever. I'm not. I don't want to say anything bad about her. I don't know her. But he sent her. This is like his new girlfriend or whatever. So an acquaintance of mine, uh, who's in Montreal, gets like a message on Facebook from this Kevin McPhee's new girlfriend. We didn't know this at the time, but this girl's like. Oh, who's Star's Break Problems? Like, da 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 da. And my I'm going to like, lower into the audio because you're sometimes cracking up when you speak in. Oh, fuck. Okay. All right. Um, so that was fine. So he, he sent this girl to, to try and find out who I am. And then there was like this girl I was talking to uh, that I met on Twitter that's like a uh, pro poker player. Or not pro, like she's like, she works at Playground. Her name's Bree. And I was, like, talking to her or whatever, and then, like, Kevin McPhee went out of his way to, like, talk to her and tell her, like, how bad a person I am and, like, she's a bit terrible person for associating with me and, like, it was just a fucking shit show. So I snapped, obviously. And then we had, like, heated conversation for, like, two days, and it was just ridiculous. And it was all brought on by him being a fucking insecure little fucking bitch. And that's just it. So do you guys, are you guys, did you squash your beef? No, I went to Montreal, though, and I just... I was losing so much that like I I didn't I wasn't really in the mood to like talk to anybody or anything like it just it didn't go well so I didn't even want to like confront him or do anything like I was there to make money and I didn't so it sucked. So for those that don't know, you you play online PLO. Yes. Yeah. Your name very unknown. You play on Poker Stars though. Yeah. Um, the stakes you play range from anywhere from five ten to fifty one hundred zoom. Mm -hmm. And there's been some speculation on some screen names. I'm gonna name some screen names that some people might have said, and you you can just give a reaction, say something, cause okay. All right. I'm not gonna confirm or deny anything though. I I can't. You might, you, you might decide to. You might change your mind here. Okay. okay. All right. You you win, take it. You gotta what talk or just go on you. What? No no comment. No. Can't beat. <laughs> No comment, no. <laughs> Lucky tint twin twenty. <laughs> no. <laughs> that guy he, that guy's ridiculous. If you want to talk about him for a second, I don't know if you want to or not. Do we want to talk wait, oh let me go through a couple more screams and we'll get back. Alright, alright. Yeah. Cobus eighty three. 
screen. <laughs> no. Do you, wait, do you know who that screen it might be? I, I might know. I, I might know who plays on that account. So let's say there was an account that was from Malta, maybe home of the cleaner, 11, and maybe they happen to be friends. Maybe, yeah. And maybe there was a guy who, who played every day for six years straight who stopped playing, and all of a sudden this other account showed up in Malta that plays every day the exact same characteristics and play style. I know it's it's weird, right? Would you would you think that that's a, would you think it's the same person maybe? One might be led to believe that, yes. Cuz I didn't fucking put this together. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I didn't put it together. But I am wearing sorry, I'm wearing this tank top. It's my rage tank top. It's a little bit it kind of fall whatever. I wear this out when I'm raging and I'm fucked up. So but you 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 think that confirmed. I'm sorry. I'm reading the I'm reading the um I'm reading the comments on YouTube right now. We're live streaming this, by the way. There, there's some uh, I've got 70 viewers right now. Uh, if you guys ever want to leave a comment, any questions, you can leave them in there. I'll go ahead and and uh, give some shout outs here, ask some questions. Where are you seeing these comments? Oh, so th the comments are the comments are on the YouTube link. You you didn't retweet it also, so that your 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 fans can say you did retweet. Okay. But yeah, on, if, you, if you load up the YouTube link and just right. make the audio, you'll see the comments in the right. And someone said that, why does Joey always wear tank tops? Sort of creepy. What kind of weird fucking guy is this? Telling poker? Wearing tank tops? Is, what do you wear, bro? Telling poker. Tank tops are creepy? You fucking kidding me? Tank tops, bro. Tank tops are creepy? Let's go, man. Let's go, telling poker. Let me see. Get on the cam. I'll give you. I'll send you a link. You can come in the chat. Let's show everybody what you wear. Sorry, I was acting like you for a second. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm like, I'm not, I was trying to act like Mad Dog here for a second here and uh, and get my uh, get my uh, aggro on, but I'm not really aggro anymore. I used to be like you, where I would talk a lot of shit, and I wasn't quite as racist, as homophobic, and as sexist as you are, but I had my moments. But now I'm old and. Okay, but I I don't I don't want to say that I'm those things in general. I'm not like a bona fide racist. Like I think I am black basically, and like I'm not. I respect women. I'm not like I might let some girls have it, but I, I'm not like. What is it like? I'm not a narcissist or whatever. I'm none of that. I'm gonna ask some questions. Go ahead, answer. Are you a racist? No. Are you homophobic? No. Are you sexist? No. I don't have any other questions. <laughs> Let's go back to your screen name thing. All right. So people in the chat seem to think you are. You win. Take it. Okay. Are you? Are you not him? No. Okay. But someone also said that you don't play. You don't actually play on stars. I can confirm you. One hundred percent are playing. The mid and high stakes games on Poker Stars. That, that's not false. I wouldn't lie about that. You're definitely playing those games. So some people thought you don't play in those games, wherein you actually do play those games, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm a little off track here. So these, these, these live streams. I don't really, these, these comments are interesting. Are you seeing some of these comments? Yeah, like make him say swag and nig in his hilarious, non intimidating accent. What's that, like, what's that even mean? They're saying that they think your Twitter voice, you sound, you, on Twitter you sound like menacing, mean, aggressive, whereas on yeah. here you sound like a little, I sound like a little sweetheart, like a little teddy bear. Uh, man, I think it's because I'm so muffled because of this fucking mask I'm wearing. <laughs> Wait, do you want to take off the mask and show the world what, what you look like? Not really, no. No? No. Shout out to Vince, Vince Willie, watching the live stream right now. Shout out to Rob O.T. for one yes sex with me. I appreciate <laughs> you. So let's talk about a couple things here. That you know, one thing you like to always go on about on Twitter is is Tinder and plenty of fish. What, and so what are you meeting women a lot every day on there? How, what's what's up with you and your obsession with talking about tw Tinder and plenty of fish? Uh, well. <laughs> I, as you know, Joe, I'm kind of a train wreck when it comes to women, um, and I'm not really sure why. It's just the way I am, I guess. I have some, I, I have some theories why, but go ahead. 
Okay, so when I first started posting about Plenty of Fish and Tinder and shit, I just kind of wanted feedback on if my lines were good with women or whatever, and I just tried to entertain people mostly. That's all it is. I don't take it too seriously. What? Huh? What'd you say? What? What did you say? I said, like, I, d I don't take Tinder and Plenty of Fish too seriously. Like, I just do it to entertain people. Do you have any tips out there for, for aspiring guys that want to date many women like you? I mean, yeah, you might not make it past three weeks with some of these girls, but you're, 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 you're getting in the game, you know? You're, 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 you're throwing it out there. You're throwing yourself out there. You know what I mean? You're trying. A for effort, right? Well, the, the biggest tip I can give, like, for Tinder especially, is just consistently swipe right. Like, don't even look at the girl. Like, just... Okay, that's level one. Come on, give us something. Give us some, give us some in-depth strat, man. Um, like, with girls, I, uh... Like, on Plenty of Fish, I'll say, like, retarded, uh, like, pickup lines or whatever just to get, like, a reaction out of them, to get the ball rolling. Okay, and? And that works pretty good sometimes. I see. So there's some speculation by me that Daniel the Ground is watching. Would you like to say anything to Kid Poker? I know you guys have had your your wars with each other. Would you like to give say if he's watching? Would you like to tell him anything? Not really. Like this fucking guy. Um. He's he infuriates me. He's like he's the face of poker stars, right? Like he's the face of poker actually, and he. He doesn't, I don't feel that he represents the company or the game all that well. Like, it's great that he's outspoken and he talks to recreational players and he makes people feel comfortable, and I think that's great. Um, <clears throat> but I think in general, like, he, he doesn't represent poker stars itself very well at all. And uh, I'm, I'm talking from, like, the online point of view. He should be encouraging people to deposit and go play online poker, get better at poker. Because you'll get better at poker playing online faster, obviously, than playing live. Just more volume and whatever. And then, like, the other day, he says, like, uh, there's way more scum, like, there's way more scummier stuff going on online than poker stars, or than playing live. And he can't say that. Like, why would he say that poker stars, a company that pays him to represent them, why would he go out of his way to say that there's shady people that play on poker stars? Like, that just doesn't, that didn't make any sense to me at all. So, it seems like you want to beat the fuck out of him when you see him next. Is that a true statement? What's that? It sounds like you want to beat the fuck out of him when you see him in person. Is that true? No, I don't want to. I don't want to beat the fuck out of him, but I'd like to sit down and have a drink with him and say, what the fuck are you doing? Give your head a shake. Okay. What about Kevin McAfee? If you saw him in person, would there, would there be a confrontation? Probably. Fist fight. You versus him, who wins? I would probably kill him. You'd probably kill him. I think you'd kill him too. I've seen you in action, kid. I, I think you'd I think you'd take him down. <laughs> um, yeah, what about like, uh, well, there was one other person you had a lot. You had you talk a lot about on Twitter. And that's Jason Mercier. Yeah. What you don't what's, you don't like him? Uh, not in particular, no. Why not? He uh, man, he's just so fucking weird. He he, tw he tweets like like uh. What, what do you call them? Bible quotes and shit like that. And he's just... He, I don't want to talk about Jason Burris here. I really right, don't. Talk, come on. Get heated, kid. You're, you sound like a fucking nit right now. Get heated. Come on. No, I, I can't. Like, I just... I don't have any anger built up towards him because I haven't really followed him in so long that there's nothing fresh to, to bring out any anger. Like, I really can't say much about him right now. Okay. You have a lot of anger. I'm going to read some recent tweets by you and you can confirm or deny if you have any anger. My yeah. buddy's sister, 17, posted skanky photos on Instagram. I told her to take them down and be smarter. Now her friends are snapping at me. Ugly ass Tinder matches kill my vibe. Now me reading these Twitter things, and then me me listening to you now, I don't I don't I don't see the I don't see the the match. I it seems like I'm stars red problems more than your stars red problems. Yeah. You no. Know? Like. Yeah, I wouldn't say I'm getting soft, but, like, that was... I don't even know why I tweeted that. Like, I'm such an idiot. Like, my buddy's kid sister posted a skanky pic, and, like, I've known this girl her whole life, and I used to, like, 
go with my buddy to pick her up after school, like elementary school and shit. Like, and she's posting like stupid pictures, and it just rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know why I broadcasted that to everyone. So tilting. So, read some comments. One person asked, "How does Joey know so much about this guy?" Well, I I know you from real life. You, we found out a lot in Vancouver. You've seen me do do some very interesting things in Vancouver while you were there. Well, that. Go ahead. Since since you're being about big fucking nit, why don't you be less nitty about me? Describe the the time in Vancouver that we spent together with each other. What did you see? What was it like? What did I let you try? What didn't I let you try? <laughs> All right. Um, should I talk about like when we first met or like? You know what, Mad Dog? Tell them whatever the fuck you want. I don't really care. I'm not like you. I'm not gonna knit it up on this, on the live stream. Go ahead. Share your I thoughts. Gonna, I don't know. I mean, I'm just. I, I wouldn't say I'm nervous, but like, fuck, I'm not used to this. Um, the, podcast, the podcast, the live stream. This is live too. We haven't even edited this out. If someone hears it. It's on. Eighty-four viewers. Uh, it slightly beats the record for the Lafort podcast. But go uh, ahead. Talk, just talk, talk. Talk about me. You'll you'll talk more freely about me about our time spent together in Vancouver. Okay. Um. I guess I'll talk about. Uh, should I talk about you test driving Ferraris or something? Whatever you want. It's fine. You can talk about hotels. You can talk about. People you might see me with. All right. All right. Should I tell the hotel story? Yeah, the hotel story is great. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. So uh, it was like the end of summer, wasn't it? Wasn't it like September or something? When did you move to Australia? Just go on the story. It doesn't matter what it is. All right. So um, you were in a rush to get out of uh, the condo you had rented with Stinger, and you asked me to come over and help you clean, I remember. And so me being a good friend, I said, okay. So I went over, and you were just laying in bed with, like, that rager chick girl. I don't even remember her name. And you hadn't lifted a single finger to, like, clean or anything. And you had to be out in, like, two or three hours, and the place was a mess. So anyways, uh, I helped you clean up or whatever, and then you were still on the fence about going to Australia, I think. So while you're deciding, you decide to get a hotel room. At, what was it? What was that hotel? Was it the Fairmont? Downtown Vancouver? Yeah, it was Fairmont. So, uh, for helping you move, we had a nice, you know, you bought a seafood tower and, and we had a nice meal and, and whatever. And I think we were drinking like expensive wine because I remember getting like kind of drunk. Or it's kind of like hazy, but I, I think I got drunk off ex expensive wine. And uh, then we go up to the room and. Uh, you were, I remember you had these gloves with like lights on them, and you started raging, and you put like this crazy fucking techno on, and you put these lights on, and like it was total darkness in the room, but there was like bright lights everywhere, and you had these stupid fucking gloves on, and then I don't want to like confirm or deny you ingesting any sort of uh, substance. I, I don't want to talk about that, but I remember leaving. Uh, and then I woke up the next morning and I checked online and you lost 100k that night. <laughs> so I don't really want, I don't even know what happened between the time I left and the time I woke up, but I'm assuming it wasn't good. Well, me and, me, me and I can fill this, the blanks and me and the girl I was with in the hotel room at the time. Well, I, you know, we had some fun and the laptop came out. I logged on PokerStars and I lost $125,000 that night. Yeah, I don't even know how that happened. I don't know about your 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 story. Your story. We gotta get we we gotta get you on a couple more practice podcasts for your storytelling. Your storytelling really lacks enthusiasm. You gotta, speak, you gotta speak with 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 some with some excitement when you're talking to the live stream viewers. These guys want some excitement. They've seen you on Twitter talking this talking that talk, thinking you about that life, thinking you got the biggest fucking dick in the world. Thinking you the man, you can fuck any girl you want. You think that you're they've seen you. Hashtag ad girl, hashtag red problems. And now they're seeing this guy and he's like, Yeah, we were in Vancouver and we went to the hotel room and we had some wine. Oh what the fuck, man? I'm gonna start getting ad girl on you. Yeah, exactly. Let's go. Come on. Get help. Oh human O. Tell us your thoughts on Oh Human O. <sighs> human is like he's he is the word like he is what killed PLO at Poker Stars. Like he was the beginning frontier, like first person to start seat scripting and bum hunting aggressively and buttoning people. And he was like 
he's the worst thing to ever happen to poker stars because once he started doing it, everybody started doing it. Okay. And it didn't really work out for him. Like he lost a, a ton at PLO. He bum hunted and he still lost a ton. And nowadays he's playing like one two full ring no limit. So like karma's a bitch. Like I really don't feel bad. And I don't like I don't want to talk about people going on downswings or whatever because that's, Why? That's what you do. You talk about people going on downswings. It, it's sad or whatever, and I don't want to like make fun of him for that, but like this is karma. Like that's what he fucking gets for ruining the game. Can we get a we got we got we got one of my favorite a uh, friend of the podcast Alexo eighteen in the chat room right now? Can we get him on here? Maybe he'll spice this up a bit. <laughs> Wait, is it maybe Alexo started reg problems? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, con I'm 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 you know I'm confused, man. I'm confused. Where's that fire? How can we get that fire to you? Can we bring up Janie? You want to talk about Janie? No, I don't. Uh, talk about that guy, Janie. The guy Janie left before. Will that fire you up? Probably. So. You forgot talking about Lucky Twin. Which guy? Look at these you? fucking people in the chat. Okay, now I'm starting to get tilted. Like, look at these fucking people. Like, what do you want from me? Like, all these people just want me to be some fucking hyper aggressive fucking guy that just okay. like. Okay. Tell you what, you pretend you're me for a second. I'll pretend I'm. I'll pretend I'm Stars Red Problems. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, look Go at the. You, the hey, host. You, you lead the conversation, and I'll give you. I'll give you some type of Stars Red Problems answers that people are expecting to hear right now. Go ahead. I'm not going to use your homophobic slurs like you use because I don't really speak that way. But but I'll show you what they want to hear. Go ahead. What do you want me to ask? Like just. You're me. Just ask me a me question that I'd ask you. Okay. Uh. Well, Joe, what do you think of the current state of high stakes PLO and poker stars? You know what, man? Let me tell you what I think, Joe. I think these fucking pussies on Poker Stars are the biggest pieces of shit ever. They don't fucking play anybody. They sit out. They got seat scripts. They're bum hunting. I mean, these guys are the biggest fucking jokes ever. How are these guys making it? Like, they're ruining the fucking games, Joe. They need, Poker Stars needs to fix this. They need to fix this problem now. They have to fix it. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll, I'll get more aggro. I'm telling okay, you these... Give me one these, more question, let me give you another example, please. Okay. Um, Joe, what do you think of tournament poker? <sighs> you know what I think about tournament poker? It's all these guys, right? They're all staked. They're all in makeup. No one's got money. They're all broke. They they sit in these tournaments, and they, they, they don't have a life. They don't do anything. They're just taking money from other people conning their way to get a new stake into another tournament, and they're just the, the biggest fucking jokes in the whole entire poker world. <laughs> Pretty good, man. That sounds like me. I know. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh, we got Aaron Brown cheering me on. Yeah, she thinks you're a fucking dork right now because you're, you're being a big pussy. Okay, All right. Pretty, all right. I'm gonna go back. To, I'm gonna go back to being me. <laughs> I'm not gonna be you anymore. Being me is fun. I see why you do that. Can I have your? Can I have the Twitter account for a bit? Maybe I'll give it to you for a little bit. Can I tweet some things out? I won't be quite as hateful as you are, but I I'm, I can sure have some fun. <laughs> look at my notepad here. So Poker Star suspended your Twitter. What was up with that? Or uh, what happened? Your Twitter was taken away for a long time. Everyone missed you. Yeah, that was fucked, man. Um. Well, basically, I I had been warned before, and I had been um, like banned for like little one day stints for using PokerStars branding. PokerStars kept appealing to Twitter that I was using their fucking branding. And I just I kept emailing like, yeah, I'll change it. Oh, I changed it, and they let me have my account back. And then the last time, the recent time when I was banned for like a really long time, it was like six weeks or something. I. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I got an email saying that, uh, again, I was in, they found me guilty of using their fucking branding, and instead of being, like, banned, I was suspended, like, full-out suspended. And then I had to go, like, through this whole great big appeal thing, and then I had to read this link and, like, basically sign it and, like, just agree to be, like, a normal person and take down all PokerStars branding. So, like, my, uh, like... The uh, description or whatever, I couldn't have that. Um, I couldn't have any sort of PokerStars logo or, like, anything. So whatever. It is what it is. I see. Let's try this one more time. 
How would you describe the women that you date? I would describe them as being a guy like me. <laughs> what do you think about Stealth Monk? Stealth Monk? Um, Your long lost brother. Are you guys lovers? What's I mean? What's the deal with you two? It seems no. like you guys have some like something going on with each other, like a m more like a like a sex type of relationship. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, uh, Stealth Monk, I think, just, I, I think Justin's, like, I, I want to say that he's, like, a nice guy, but I can't. I feel like we have mutual understanding, like, I think we come from, like, similar hatred towards the poker world or whatever, and we just kind of talk nonsense now. He thinks he's a lot better poker than what he is, though, and that's what I find, you know, pretty tilting, but... How do you, how do you know he's not good at poker? Uh, I think the results speak for themselves. Um, like, he hasn't done anything in, like, years. He never relocated. He always complains about being busto and living in his car, and, like, he doesn't do anything. He gets staked for, like, $400 fucking tournaments and, like, gets fucking DQ'd at the final table or whatever at Foxwood. So he's not doing too much, really. So are you guys friends? I would say now we are, yeah. We have mutual respect. I guess uh, we talk on Skype sometimes, and we rant to each other, and it's cool. I don't know. I'm gonna see him in Vegas, and like, I don't know. I'll probably hang out with him. I own 50 bucks because I bought out of uh, of a bet that we had. So. Are you guys gonna have sex? Uh, no. Are you sure? What if drugs uh, are involved? We have sex with them then. Well, uh, depends on what kind of drugs. So you're okay. saying there's a drug that you could take to have sex with Stealth Monk in Vegas? <laughs> No, I'm being sarcastic, man. <laughs> if we Kickstarter is sending Stars Right Problems to Choice Center, would you do it? I bet you if I... Okay, here's a bet. I bet if I went to Daniel Negreanu and I said... Like, he's such a fucking Muppet. If I, if I just told him, Daniel, I'm having troubles and I'm so angry, look at my Twitter, will you pay for my Choice Center? I bet you he would. I bet you he would. What do you think of God like Roy? Poker Stars Pro... PLO player on Poker Stars. Okay, Roy's like he's like the worst of the worst. He he plays like a little fucking twelve big blind, big blind stack and like plays a bunch of tables and he takes forever to act and he starts time out and he's just I don't know why Poker Stars would sign a guy like him. Like he doesn't give anything to anybody. Like yeah, he's from Australia and he plays PLO, but there's probably a lot better Australian regs that they could sign instead of that fucking clown. What do you think about Deldar? <laughs> Deldar is the fucking worst of the worst. Like, as far as, like, I don't want to say he's a scumbag because he hasn't done, like, he's never ripped anybody off, but he's a scumbag at the tables where he'll, like, button you and then laugh about it and chat, and he'll hit and run, and he'll, he's just, he'll, he'll clog up the heads-up lobby when you're trying to get a game with somebody, and he's just a fucking idiot. What do you think about a guy selling a tournament package for a 1.3 markup and selling 70% of himself? <laughs> Fucking Jimmy Fricky. Yeah, like, that's what's wrong with tournament players. Wait, 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 sorry. It says, I saw a package. Why did you, de I sh why did you delete tweets? I told you I was going to go through your Twitter and bring things up, and you fucking deleted tweets. I didn't delete anything, man. Yes, you did, you motherfucker. All right, I saw a package where that busto blob Fricky, is he, I, see, is he, I think he's in better shape now, is selling at 1.3 and has to sell 70% to play. This fucking guy is free-rolling the series. When shit like that happens, you know markup is fucking wrong, and I don't blame the players, I blame the investors, like that, something. Whatever you said doesn't make sense. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think, like, it. you can't really blame Fricky, right? Like, obviously it's up to the investors, and, like, if it's what people are willing to buy it for, right? But this guy, like, he sells at 1.3, he has to sell, he said, I have to sell 70% to play, so he's, he, he's free-rolling the series for 30% because of markup. Like, that's just wrong, I think. Like, he has no financial interest at all, except for free-rolling free the community and, you know, trying to make a living off that. Like, he can do what he wants, like, I guess it's fine, like, it's done with, and... So, wait, so, let's, let, me, let me ask you a question. Let's say that you're, like many poker players these days, 
except when you're Alexo, who comes from Chilean mining money. He lives in Chile. His parents fund his whole entire poker career, and that's how he plays 200 400 randomly on poker stars. So that's another story for another time. What do you think about these guys, though? If you're in these positions, like, you know, let's speculate the Jimmy Fricky. I don't know anything about him, you know, anything about him, so this is all speculation. But let's say that you're one of these guys. You live in Vegas. You, you can't, you don't really win at poker anymore. You don't have any money on your own. You've gotten staked all your life, and the only way for you to actually play anything is you charge 1.3 markup to play anything. Like, wouldn't you do that? You don't have any other choice. You can't win at poker. I mean, maybe you yeah, can. No, no, no. But this is this is the misconception. I, I I'm not mad at Fricky for doing it. Like he obviously did what he had to do. So if he has to hustle people, then that's what he has to do. And that's just the way I'm going to word it because that's what he's he's. The people who invested in him, those are the people that are idiots. Like, why would you invest in somebody who has no financial interest? Like, I just don't think he, they're going to play as good um, when they're free rolling. Like, they're, he, he just he has none of his own money in, and it's just part of the community that's all fucked up. And I'm not wrong. What do you think about Spanish? Spanish. How, I don't know how to say his name. He's a poker stars player. What do you think about Spanish? Spanish is the fucking worst, man. He, he's a seat scripting king. Uh, he just he bum hunts all fucking day, and he takes up like he is the worst, man. Like, what else can I say about him? Everybody who knows PLO knows that he's the worst. I guess I have to talk to people that you don't know. They don't know about him. They, they want you to break it down. They, they want you to learn some new adjectives. Besides the fucking worst, man. You got to tell Spanish who he is. Spanish is a cocksucking motherfucker from some fucking other countries, definitely American, who fucking preys on people with his fucking seating script and sits on with less than milliseconds before they sit. Before they sit. And he's one of the biggest winners on Russian PTR. That's what they want you to say. They don't want you to say he's the fucking worst. You know? That's what they don't want you to say. They want you to have some life behind your word stars wreck problems. All right, I'll, start, I'll start being angrier. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for letting anybody down. They, 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 they think you're... They, they, I don't know what they think, man. I'm sad. I'm sad, man. We need to give you some ketamine. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll loosen up a bit. You want some ketamine? You want a little okay? Yeah. You already denied that action. You bought that K-Life? You want some ketamine? That'll maybe scoop you up a bit. You want some ecstasy? <laughs> want a little cocaine? What do you want? What's it going to take for you to get up here? What's it I don't up? know, man. I'm fucking super tired. You're super tired. You, you slept a full night and you're super tired, huh? I didn't sleep that much last night. Why not? What? Why not? Uh, you know what? Let me tell you what a good friend would do, Mad Dog. Do you remember when we were in Vancouver and you met a girl... Blonde girl, and I said you should let me have sex with her. Do you remember this? Yeah. Okay. And what did you tell me? Probably go fuck yourself. Right. Well, I got a friend, Vincent Willie. Let me tell you what happened with him. He's in the chat right now. We were in Vancouver together. <laughs> we were in Vancouver together, and he he uh, he had a girl. Wouldn't leave him alone. And you know what? I said, you know what? If you want, I'll take her off your hands. I'll have sex with her. And like a good friend, he said, go ahead, man. I bequeath her to you. Wow, what a boss. Why, why is he a better friend than me? Or why? I'm sorry. I'm confused. I'm looking at I'm chat. And why is he a better... Do you think he's a better friend than you? Does that make him a better friend than you? Probably. Yeah? I don't know what guy would just be hit, like, be with a girl and just let his buddy fuck her. Like, that's not really... A good friend. That's a, I don't know, that's pretty, like, minus EV, like, life EV. Like, that's pretty, like, nothing good can happen from that. Did you ever ask me for one of, for a girl in Vancouver? You know how to get her to you. Which one did you want? Which one did yeah. you want the most? Ferrari day? chick. Ferrari chick. You wanted the girl I met while we were test driving a Ferrari. So, let me yeah. tell a story. So, you came to town, we were driving around in my car with the top down, and you said, hey, why don't we go to Ferrari and test drive a car? Now, at the time, thanks, Vince. Vince is smiling at Now, so we're driving around, and you're set. I was mentioning I wanted to buy a Ferrari. I think I was up like 450k in like four months. And I'm like, hey, I'll get a Ferrari. YOLO. Why not? Let's fucking do it. And you were like, why don't we go to Ferrari and test drive a car? And I'm like, this is ridiculous. We don't, we're just gonna walk into Ferrari and 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 test drive a car. But we go to we go to Ferrari. We walk in. There's a receptionist at the door, a nice girl. 
hey, America. And we get to chat, and I mention I want to test drive a Ferrari. They call down Chung Lee, the, uh, the guy upstairs. And so we go upstairs, and I tell him I want to test drive an F430 that I saw online. And he says, did he just let us? He said, okay, right? Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, he did say okay. So they pull the car up downstairs, and they let me test drive the fucking Ferrari, right? We yeah. go upstairs, we're talking money. They say it's $173,000. And I say, okay, how about how do I get it back home to the United States? Then they bring in the woman that you're talking about, the accountant. She yeah. walks in, we start talking numbers, and I just get, I get instantly turned on. There's this woman, attractive, beautiful, and she's talking math. And I tell, tell Chung Lee that the only way I'll think about buying this car is if you get me a date with that girl. No, that, no, I put that in there. Okay, well, what happened, what happened next? Go, continue the story on from there. So we go upstairs, talk numbers, and you're being all weird about you wanted to get a different speedometer cluster or whatever. You couldn't do the kilometers. You had to do miles an hour. You were going to pay like 10K for that alone or whatever. And then we were talking taxes and shit and then getting it home and whatever. Anyways, so then they bring in this girl and they're like, oh, Joe, how do you want to pay or whatever? Like, is your credit good? And Are you checking out? Joe's like, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to pay cash or whatever. And so they were like, okay. And then, uh, like, but you were at this point, you were in deliberations where you were trying to negotiate a price, right? God damn it. What happened with the girl? Who gives a fuck about the negotiations? What happened with the girl? Well, that was. All right, but that was part of the story because that's when she came in and then she gave like, oh, we can do that because we were going back and forth and then he had to go to her to see what the price was and then he came back with yes or no and then she eventually just came in the room and I was like, that girl's fucking sexy. I was like, if we're going to buy this car, then you have to get us a date with that girl or whatever and then we never, you never ended up buying the car but you still got the date so that says something. And then what happened with me and the girl? You saw her for a little while, didn't you, after I left? We fell in love for three months, and she came to Vegas twice to visit. Wow. This girl's like my dream girl, too. She's, like, really sexy, and, like, she's, like, what, what, would you, what do you call an older woman like that? Like, sophisticated, I guess? Like, successful, classy? Well, Mike? She had, like, freckles, I guess? Oh, she was hot. You, you, <laughs> you haven't had this experience in your life yet, but what happens is once you start to get a bit more success with your life, and you start carrying yourself with a bit more swag, then you start attracting an even higher quality of women, you know, maybe older, maybe they have a career, maybe they're they're pretty well educated, you know, and that's what I would call that a pretty, uh, you know, not uh, what, when you're living in a downtown, that's the type of people you meet. You meet these people that have these careers, that are pretty smart, that are you know have goals, have ambitions, have passion for something, and I would I would say that's the kind of person that you want to meet. But you know, you got to be where the action is to meet that type of person. You can't be living in the in the boondocks in Canada where you're currently located at. You got to you got to get back to the big city of Vancouver. Go find your friend Kevin McAfee. Are 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 we gonna? Can we touch on that, Joe? Are we gonna go to Vancouver soon? Are you gonna do the prop bet? Well, as you know, as you know, Mad Dog, I've saved <laughs> this podcast by having to talk about Dana Grena all night. Yeah, I guess. Um, as you know, I, I, I might go to Vancouver, but I'm, I'm not sure. I think it's a bad influence for me to go to Vancouver. As you know, I've been containing my rage for the past one year as I'm a family man right now. Yeah. And I have a nice girlfriend, but I, I don't think Vancouver is the best place for me. Okay. Like, so for the fans out there, do you, do you see yourself attempting this prop bet in the future? And if yes, uh, whereabouts? Would you go back to Europe or... What are you thinking, Joe? Yeah, maybe you should be the host. Let's switch this up. You be the host and just ask me questions, okay? Yeah, well, I'm, since I suck so bad, I'll just be like, yeah, I'll be the host for a little I bit. Mean, like one of the goals on, on <laughs> one of the goals you, you learn, you, you, you study and you learn from podcasting is you want to make the guests look good. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, I'm fucking setting up the layups here for you to knock them out of the park and you're like, well, you know, I just, <laughs> I mean, you sound like, you sound like, the problem is you sound like you could beat high stakes PLO and mid stakes PLO. That's the problem here. Whereas, like, most people that speak like you do on Twitter, like, they clearly aren't winning poker players. But now people really see behind the mask, and they see that you're actually, like, a pretty well-spoken guy, like, not, not the worst person in the history of the earth. And that's how you actually win. Because, you know, normally, like, you think about these big trolls who, like, are the most, who say these things, and, and you know, those kind of things you might say, 
debatably, and there, there's no way these people win at poker. They don't have the work ethic, they don't have the heart, they don't have the passion, they don't have the determination, however you want to say it. But, you know, for you, obviously, now they're getting a different side of you. And yeah. Now they know. Now they realize that. You, you, where do you, so where do we go from here with 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 your Twitter? So your Twitter, right? Now now people know that you're you're just a kind you're a kind guy. You just hate some people sometimes. You know what what happens now? No, like I just it's really tough for me. To, I'm I'm like a what do they call me? I'm like they class like I'm I'm a fucking keyboard warrior, right? I guess I just outlash at the world sometimes on Twitter to entertain people, and like that's just what it is. <laughs> Look at these fucking people in the chat. Can we talk about this for a second? Look at these guys. Go ahead, talk about whatever you want. Uh, this guy thinks he's the host. What? I'm the host. It's my goddamn podcast. What do you call me then? Not the host? Oh, Jules. Go ahead, talk about whatever you want to talk about. Jules is trolling. Uh, well, you tell me what you're. You're the host. What did you want to talk about? You tell me. He's just way too nervous. He may be a fun guy, but he needs to relax. I agree. He needs like a he needs some ketamine really to calm him down here a bit. That'll loosen, <laughs> that'll loosen you up a bit. You know, I really miss Josh McIntosh come back to Sydney. You know, I really miss Sydney. I, I had some I had some very fun times in Sydney. I turned my condo there into the after hours place and I was able to play music as loud as possible and till 10 a.m. for five days a week and nothing ever happened. So I really miss Sydney and I, I you know, hope maybe I'll be back one day. I'm not sure. Joe, I remember when you were losing a ton when you went to Australia <laughs> and you called me that night begging me to come down there and live with you. And you're like, I'm going to fly you out right now. <laughs> Do you remember this phone call? Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. What happened? I was sad. I'm pretty sure I lost like. Seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and I was doing a lot of mind-altering substances, and I was like, "I need to get out of this. This country's killing me." And yeah, I probably should have had you come. I would have probably made a lot more money if you would have came. You're really good. You're good luck for me. You when you whenever you whenever you uh, sweat me or watch me play poker, I do really well. That's a true story. I have the run good. Serious prop would be the grind PLO from Isle of Man, the least rage place on earth. Well, that actually be a good thing. I was in a non-rage place. Stars Rag Problems. Who are your favorite players to watch besides Deldar losing 50k to a random fish? Okay, who are your favorite players to watch? Who do you like? Who do I like? Uh, like, obviously, the end bosses. My, my favorite, like, by far, uh, is Ben. Ben's just like a pro's pro. He's just like a good fucking guy. He, you know, like, he'll play a lot if there's action going. He's not afraid to play anybody. Ben, ben Tallarine or Ben Ben Sauce one two three four. Ben eighty six. Ben Tallarine. He's just okay. like a pro's pro. Everybody should be like him. Just a good fucking guy. He's probably like my favorite. Why do you remain, well, Why do you remain anonymous? I don't want to hear that. Why do you remain anonymous? That's part of my mystique. That's part of who I am, man. What mystique? What does that mean? Mystique. What's that mean? It's what keeps me interesting. So you're claiming if you were outed, <laughs> you wouldn't be interested. Yeah, but that? with all the shit that I've talked to people, when I go play live, people will be like, hey, that's fucking reg problem. Let's go fucking kill him or something. No or one's something. Do oh, are you kidding me? You think people are going to beat you up or something because you talk shit? No, I just don't want to have that confrontation live with people. It's something, not something I want to deal with. I'm not a pussy. Like, obviously, I'm a pretty big guy. I could kill a lot of people that come at me, but, like, I just don't want to deal with it. How do you feel about Run It Once and Phil Galfond? Um, I think I think Run It Once is a great site. I'm a member there, and I think that I think their instruction and, and what they're trying to do is really good. I don't know why they want to give strat, like especially like at the mid stakes and high stakes. I don't know why people do videos for that caliber or that level of poker. Like the last thing you want to be doing in the poker economy is getting like the 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 good guys to get even better and excellent at poker like it it just it just kind of defeats the purpose but I think for like a, a training site like that is good for for like mid stakes like two four guys who want to move up to five ten and ten twenty like just to plug little leaks make maybe like little pre flop adjustments or or just like better hand reading or or whatever I think I think it'd be good for those guys but once you get into like five ten and ten twenty and you see Leo 
posting these fucking hands against people and posting all his thoughts and and, and that I, I just I don't really see the point in that. And to talk about Phil Galfond, I think he's like an end boss and like the best player and I can't really say anything bad about him. So we're gonna have Izzel Drew obviously on a podcast very soon. I'm gonna talk to him about the same thing. This is what I asked him when he started doing this. Because Phil approached me, said, "Do you want to make videos for Renault ones?" I said, "Well, like, like, I mean, why? Why? I, that seems retarded. Why would I want to make videos? Why would you want to make mid? There was no really no mid stakes videos at that time. Why, why would I want to make mid stakes videos?" And Leo said he was gonna do it. And I was like, "Leo, you fucking idiot." And he's like, "No, man, it's good, 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 good idea, but." I'm gonna say something mean about Isildrin. We don't. We like Isildrin. Isildrin's cool, man. He's gonna be on. Yeah, podcast. no, no, no. I'm not saying he's bad. I like Isildrin's his friend. Of, yeah, Isildrin's friend of the podcast. We like him. He's cool. He's we a friend of the podcast. I don't want to say anything bad about Isildrin, but like, I'm just you. You get where I'm coming from, though. Where I don't think teaching good players to become great is necessarily a good thing. I would agree. You know Ben. You know Ben. Any six short stacks all the time, like God, like Roy, correct? Yeah, I know he does now. I don't even understand why, but I guess maybe he sees edges there that no one else sees. I don't know. Oh my God, you're talking about edges now. For fuck's sake, are you gonna bring up range soon? What's that? Are you gonna bring up range and edges? Like yeah, I could. Talk about math now. You want to talk? Want to want to go over some hand histories while we're here? You want to want to talk some strat or what? Hey, want to really get really really uh, bust out the the full Monty of things? Who's the best player on mid stakes at the moment, Regs? Uh, so like three six and two four and shit. Sure. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't really check out those games, but like, Alexo seems to be doing well. I guess, like, on PTR. Alexo. Alexo eighteen. Alex Manzano. He's doing okay. Um, who else is doing really good? Uh, Kobus was crushing those games, and then like the guys that play the deep games, like um. Fuck, I don't know any 3-6 guys. What the fuck? No, 3-6 doesn't even run. That was a... Wow. That was probably like the worst I, answer. I, I honestly, I'm deleting this live stream. I'm never putting this on anywhere. No one's ever going to see this. Guys, if you're in this if you're in this live stream, you are never going to see this again. I cannot live with this answer. Who's the best reg at mid fucking stakes? You say 3-6 doesn't run. <laughs> Whatever, man. I don't. Man, I don't. <laughs> you make me laugh, kid. You make me laugh. Who's the best regular at, at five ten? Or who 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 are some of the better regulars? Name a fucking good regular, kid. You play every day. Who's a good regular? Lowdy. Lowdy. You name the goddamn most generic fucking answer ever. Lowdy. He's the best. No. Sh okay. What do you think about your one one one? Um. I think Arubu is like, okay, he, okay, of all mid-stakes, he is the best mid-stakes player. If he can control his tilt and stop being a fucking idiot, that prop bet was a joke. That prop bet was the best joke ever, and I called it on my podcast preview. I was like, this is exactly yeah. why he's doing it, this is what's going to happen, and what happened, and that's, that's essentially what happened. Yeah, you made a sick read there. Well... It's pretty obvious. I've done a lot of prep bets before. I know you can tell when someone has a clear rationale for why they might make a decision to do something, and you know when they're reaching for some straws and when they have no idea exactly what they're doing and what they they don't have any plan for anything. So, oh my, yeah. What do you love to love? Oh, Josh, Josh, I love you, man. So Josh McIntosh mentions a regular. Love to play you. <laughs> <laughs> You share your thoughts, and then I'll just go ahead and share my thoughts. No, Joe, Joe, we got to hear your thoughts on Love to Program You. So, Love to Program You, a.k.a. Joe R.I., a.k.a. Love to Play You, a.k.a. Love to Play You because he has a cheating program. So, Love to Play You, for those people that don't know, he's a, uh, he, he's a cheating PokerStars account who uh, has a backdoor program where he sees your whole cards and also... Well, he sees your cards. What else more do you need? So, Love to Play You, if you ever play with him... He is a known, known programmer who knows what you have. He he goes up to play 200, 400, makes 500 thousand dollars in a week, and then plays two four the next like the next two weeks or three weeks after that. Then he'll post a graph losing at one two uh, in the forums, <laughs> and then you call him out as like suspected like this seems a little fishy. And then he doesn't doesn't play for a while. Now all of a sudden he comes back in, in his standard uh, programming mode and ran and. He's he's 100%. I I mean, whatever. Yeah. 
All I know is if you ever get in a big pot with them, don't just don't you're you're not gonna win. And when you do win, it's rare. Very rare. Very rare. Could you take Lafort in a fist fight? No fucking way. You don't think you could take Lafort? No. Why don't he, you do know, he, he seems like way too nice a guy. I don't even think we could have anything to throw down. Like there's nothing we're both too chill, I think. There's no I don't know, but physically he's just such a beast that like obviously he could like crush me awfully. Think so? You think so, huh? You think so. Any guys in the live stream have any more questions or anything like that? Anything to talk about? I'm ready to end this. I'm ready to end this, put this on private, and not let anyone see this ever again. I think that's a good call. We'll, re we'll run this back next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it again. <laughs> Goddamn fire, man. What is up with you, dude? What is up? What, what, you know, you, you bring the... Uh, you, you bring the the, the nitness is here, my friend. Man, I'm just not an angry person right now. I'm like very sleep deprived and like whatever. I mean, this is rare, but I'm at I'm at a loss for words. I don't know what this is. I don't even know. I have other topics to talk about. I don't, I don't necessarily want to. Say I know, and this is fucked because me and you can talk on Skype for like hours. About yeah, you talk, shit on Skype about, you talk shit on Skype about people. I know, and then like so I, I get in why, 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 and what, what happened? I don't know, man. It's okay. No, some people still think you're a badass. It's okay. It's all right. I'm just not. I'm not angry right now. Yeah, my boy Grilled Cheese still thinks still thinks you're a badass. Nice. You do kind of seem like a badass in a very like European type of way. European. Yeah. Well, let's. Okay, so like I said, no one's ever gonna see us again. We have eight three viewers. You ask me questions for ten minutes. I'll make. The, I'll say. I'll. I'll try to salvage this, and and then we'll get the fuck out of here. Go ahead. Talk about anything. Talk. I'm talking about anything. Ask me anything. All right, what are your plans for Vegas? What are your plans for Vegas, Joe? When are you going? My plans for Vegas, I'm gonna go. Can you area code Live Forty? Rolls. Um, actually, wait. They 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 ask more questions in the chat. Hold on. What? Can you area code Live Forty? Actually, bring drugs. My plans for Vegas. I'm going out there for EDC. I'm gonna rage very hard. I'm not gonna play any poker. I'm going to try to hang out with as many people as I possibly can. I'm going to try to do some live podcasts. If me and Aaron Brown are still together, Aaron, if you're watching this, there's a chance we might break up. Um, um, I thought I'm single now. I wish, man. Uh, just kidding. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to be in Vegas. I'm just going to rage a lot. I'm going to rage really hard. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to do a lot of video content, video blogs, and stuff like that. So, in Vegas? What? You're going to do blogs, video blogs? I'm going to do, blog, do some behind the scenes because when you think about in this, the Vegas stuff right now, no one's really like showing what the World Series of Poker experience like, you know? I mean, like, yeah, everyone just like, it's not that exciting for most people. They go to their hotel room, they take a taxi over to Rio, they sit in the fucking, they sit in the fucking uh, Brasilia room or whatever and they play live poker all day long and they go back to their hotel and they eat terribly, they don't work out, they don't actually do anything. That's how most poker players are. But some out there actually do enjoy themselves. They have a bit of fun. They go networking. They socialize. They go to dinner. They go raging. They might fuck some women. You know, they might work out. They might go to the pool. They might go to a naked pool. They might get a table. They might see a DJ. They might take off their clothes. They might wear a spirit hood. They might, you know, they just a lot of things that some fun people actually like to do. And I feel like none of these experiences out there are really being shown to people, and they don't get a chance to uh, to see that. So I want to give people that are, that can't make it out to Vegas a little bit of behind the scenes of what, uh, uh, you know what it's like to have some fun there. Yeah, that's a pretty good answer, Joe. Like, Vegas is going to be sweet, I think. People always ask, like, why aren't you in Vegas? Like, what are you doing? And it's just like, playing, playing live tournaments just doesn't well, appeal to me. Also, so, so this is, I think, a misconception some people might have about Vegas, right? So World Series of Poker, you, you think you'd go to Vegas, and, you know, you're hanging, out with your, you're hanging out with your friends, you guys are fucking getting tables at the club, you're going to all these cool dinners and stuff like that. But uh, but what happens really is that most of these people, they just go there and they play poker all day long. They don't really want to do much else. Even if you're friends with them on Skype, you're friends with them on Facebook and Twitter, and you, you have a relationship with them. But for the most part, people out there just want to have fun. Or they, sorry, they want to work. They want they go there to work and play poker and grind. They don't actually go there to to socialize. There's very few rare people that are like kind of like me who just go to Vegas to have fun. Like, these people want to go and make money, which is understandable because they play poker for a living. World Series is only one time of the year. They want to maximize their EV while they can. Whereas, I don't give a fuck. I want to go have fun. So, 
Joe I, do you plan stars? I mean, how much do you know about all the players? Well, all the for the most part, all the regulars are are still the same over time. Like no, every single regular pretty much that we've talked about here, I've pretty much they've been regulars for four or five years. I mean, I played millions of hands on Poker Stars, and currently I play on, of course, untracked Euro sites and on nice American sites like Bovada and Lock and not Lock, kidding. Um, Carbon Poker Merge Network. Party poker, I poker. You guys know we play untracked Euro sites, guys. Come on. What kind of fucking dumb questions is that? Do I play on stars? What kind of fucking living in the United States. Of course I don't play on poker stars. Come on. I like Bovada. It's cool. I get my nice cash outs really fast. It's very easy. Play four tables. You're anonymous. You know, you just three bet people. They don't know who you are. Join your one's not associated with you. It's perfect. So there you go. Ariabu, who is he? Some speculation. He might be Cobus 83. No one's going to see this. So basically, you take a look at Cobus. When Cobus came along, Ariabu. Probably some sort of tax purposes, speculation obviously, some sort of tax purposes in his country, he decided to get a new account. So when a random account pops up, starts playing all the tables, starts tables with you, plays deep tables, plays, you know, that he, uh, he shares a very similar characteristics to what Ariabu used to play. He's put Ariabu all, all the time. I know how we play, I, I know his tendencies. So when you see these random accounts that pop up, that and then you see dumbass the cleaner start a fucking thread that says I'm not Arya Boo and no one was talking about him being Arya Boo. They're both living in Malta. They're obviously friends. They have a type of relationship. Like, all right, I'm you know I'm disappointed that I didn't put the thoughts together. It doesn't really matter anymore for me, but you know it'd be it's obviously a good thing for people to you know have an idea of who they might be you know playing with if it is Arya Boo. So that's it. Any other questions? You think Pilo, you think that Pilo is getting harder? Harder, of course, it's getting harder. People are getting better. You know, as players continue to get better, then the games are going to get harder. Obviously, that was a bad answer. I'm sorry. I was reading something else. Go ahead. What do you think? Do you think Pilo is getting harder? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> like when people first learn the game of Pilo, it's it's awesome. But like they're always learning at smaller stakes, obviously. And then once you get up to significant stakes, it's like no one is like completely awful. Like like there are some fish, but like very specific fish that like are whales and they play significant stakes and they just they're terrible. You need to get on the Untrack Euro sites, buddy, because there are some fucking terrible people on there and Man, I've I've played a little bit on like on game and, and eye poker and stuff like that and like those those on game streets are like they're tough kid. Like you no, no, not, not on game. game's terrible. No no not on game. Not on game. What skin like what what networks do you mean? Like eye poker or something? Why are, why are those 888? Yeah, 888 a lot is a very popular site that American players play on. People know that. Can I say that? Whatever. Who cares? 94 people are private in this stuff. We almost got 100 viewers, man. But uh, 888 is pretty good. I like playing 888. It's a lot of fun. Um, the games are pretty good. Uh, I poker as well. The games are pretty good. Party poker occasionally. There's a lot of regulars on that site as well. But you know, obviously those games are pretty good too. Um, do you like Bovada's a not, a not poker? Yeah, it's cool. It's different. It's a, it has different dynamics, different things that you, yeah, you have to get good at. It's a lot more vacuum play rather than you know some type of history built up where you're you know constructing these ranges on later streets. I can talk some strat and no one's gonna hear it, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I keep saying that. Someone's recording it. They put it on. It's okay. But uh, yeah, I like Bovada. I mean, it, it just brings a different thing. I don't like anonymous. I like building history of people. I like exploiting weaknesses that, that I might find that some people might do bad or something I might do strong that they might not know how to counter or, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm winning money in a certain situation against a certain opponent on, you know, a certain type of war texture or on turns and rivers. So I don't necessarily like anonymous poker, but it's not a terrible thing. So what limits the star's rec problems grind? He grinds anywhere from, from 3.6 to 5,100 zoom. Aside from poker, do you have any other sort of income? Rick problems, do you have any other income? Is that for me? Uh, I, have other, I have other things of income. I have a couple of cool things I've been working on starting and stuff like that. What about you? Yeah, like uh, we have a family business or whatever that I kind of lend a hand with sometimes. I don't really want to talk about that too much, but it's not like anything illegal or anything, but I've invested What's, in it and we kind of deal with that. What stakes do you plan, Bavada? I might grind with you. Peck a lemma. I play pretty much any PLO game that runs fifty cent dollar and above because obviously there's not always a bunch of action. So depending on what site I'm playing on, if I'm on Bovada and I have a lot of money on there, then I'll play. I'll play any games. I play maximum. I mean, I play the best games I can because obviously you can only play. You can't play that many tables on there. And sometimes I play no limit, but eight eight micros are full of bots. Well, you don't. So you don't play micros. So that's good. Is Zygmunt seen as a fish these days? 
not really. Is there? Yeah, he. I mean, he's not like he was when I played with him. He wasn't like I didn't wasn't really like thought he. I mean, I much enjoyed seeing him as compared to other regulars who play in the games day in and day out and are more fundamentally sound and just don't have like leaks like he might have. Whatever. Is there a program out there that you can see people's whole cards? Love to play you. He's got a program. Don't play. Get him up. Play. Don't no. Don't say that. Just don't play against him. So all right, man. Anybody's got. The comments will slow. If anybody's got any other comments, I, this is it. And then, uh, then we're gonna end this and, and bear, delete this from there for the rest of my life. <laughs> Hundred viewers, kid. Congratulations. You brought out the crowd today. Did yeah, you? but I fucking bombed, man. I'm gonna have to do this again. Let me do it tonight when I'm like super fucking tired and I'm you're fucking not, angry. You're, yeah. you're, shot. you're not used to the, to the camera. You've never been on camera before. You've never been at a, done an interview. You know, you're you're a you're, you're a gentle teddy bear with the uh, with the I don't know. How would you describe yourself? How would I describe myself? Aggro. Aggro. You're not very aggro, though. People, they're not going to believe that if they watch this. I know. I'm, man, I'm, like, I'm super tired, and like there's some personal things going on. I'm just not myself. It's fucking brutal. Yeah. Did you say you can play 888 in the U.S.? Yes. Of course you can play 888 in the U.S. You can play... You can play... Pretty much any site, non poker stars, non full tilt from the United States. <laughs> Why are you telling people this? Why are you telling people this? It's common knowledge. This is common knowledge. Yeah, but did you know what 88 was doing last week? They're they're shutting down people's accounts that have been VPNing. They have ways to detect that. Like Kevin McPhee's fucking account got shut down, and they, it, they didn't and shut my account down. They did? No. Oh. Play today. What do you mean? Shut no count down. Wow. <laughs> do you really think you could? Does Stars Reg actually think he would beat Mac Mick McPhee in a fight? Seriously, Daniel? Yes. Does Daniel? I guess I'm guessing Daniel is probably a friend of Kevin's and thinks Kevin could beat you in a fight. I want. Can we make this fight happen? I mean, I gotta see McPhee's stats before I decide on him who I think might win in a fight. But I think you know he might have a chance against you. A kind of teddy bear like you? I would fucking kill him, man. You you kill you you think you need to take him then. Let me let me look at a photo of this guy. Hold on. You're you're gonna judge by photos? I don't know. I'm gonna see if there's like a full body shot. I gotta get some stats, you know. Is he is he short, tall, is he in shape? You know? I don't know, I think it'd be a good fight. I don't know, he doesn't look like that big of a pushover. He looks like he can handle himself kind of, you know, debatably, but Yeah, but look at the size of me, Joe. You know I'm a pretty big guy. I could fucking I, Really? He, 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 he busts you and he busts you in your nuts and fucking cock you over the face. Then what? Yeah. You know? I'm like I'm from the streets, kid. I, I like I got that. What are you talking about fucking street? What you talking about? You think you're from Chirac? You think you're from where I'm from? That's where I'm from, fucking right. You're from where I'm from? You're not from Chirac though. You're I'm from, from the Chirac. Chirac. I'm from the fucking hood, man. I grew up poor, man. I grew up with the grew up with all the, all my bros. I'm playing basketball, wearing baggy shorts. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, man. Yeah, come on, you know that. <laughs> I can go like that. Stars rec problem. Give us some juice on Team Barcode. Well, you never know who's playing on that account. He doesn't really play like, anymore. No, they don't. No, but he does though. He plays like he plays a lot of mixed games and like Deuce to Seven, which I think is the game of the future. I'm gonna have to start playing that game, Deuce. Like those are some really big games on Full Tilt that run, and they're starting to run on Stars now. Like I think that that might be the game of the future. I'm not sure. I find limit games and draw games. Wait, what the fuck did you just say? You just said you think Deuce to Seven is going to be the future of poker? I think so. It's good. It's getting a lot more popular. You're trolling. You're trolling. You're oh, all right. You're pretending you're on Twitter now. All right, that's okay. Somerville. <laughs> Somerville, Jason Somerville. Don't say anything bad about him, okay? Jason Somerville should arrange a UFC fight for Stars Rick Problems and McPhee. I like Justin Somerville. He's fucking great, man. He does these awesome things on YouTube. He was great on the fucking uh, World Series of Poker live stream. He's only he's only other person really <clears throat> putting out this like really good content that's super interactive that other people can tune into on YouTube and watch all the time. So if you say anything bad about him, I'm gonna be upset at you, okay? No, I'm not gonna say anything bad about it. So I I do like what he's doing. Uh, that grind it up series or whatever it is. Awesome. Have you heard of that? Yeah, of course I have. I, I messaged him about podcast. 
tips and stuff. Oh, like okay. That. I think that's pretty cool. Like, I've never seen anything like that, and it's pretty I know, it's awesome. I think he's doing a great job. He's really, he's very interactive with, with people that... Yeah, I, I'm actually kind of embarrassed. I, I trolled him a little while ago. I know, man. I know, I'm such an idiot, and I don't know why, but I did, and then well, he did. Well, I think, I think we know why you did troll him. Yeah, uh... Yeah, yeah okay. Because uh, uh, yeah. you might be homophobic, debatably. That's debatable, but I'm definitely not. I thought you come off on Twitter. All right, yeah. maybe I am, man. Fuck it. What else? Maybe you well, I hope not, you know? I don't know, being, I don't know why you... I, I mean, I don't know why you feel like you need to be, you know? Like, just because a person might like men, might like women, might like animals, might like... Well, animals might be kind of weird, but, I mean... They're, yeah, they're people are going to do what they're going to do. There's not a difference between... Another poker player who doesn't like, like he likes men. It doesn't matter, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I just, obviously, I understand that some people were raised a certain way and they are, you know, that's how they were taught or that's how they grew up and they think it's weird. Or maybe they're just scared that they might be gay. Maybe you, maybe you're, are you gay? You think you might be gay? You want to come out right now? Joe, like, you're, like, now you're starting to tell me, man. Like, oh, no. I mean, it's funny because oh. I, I knew that's where you were going to go with that. I knew you were going to, like, I knew you were gonna bring that up, so that's that's like a sick read by me. I knew you were gonna go there, but obviously I, I'm not a homo. I have sex with a lot of very attractive women on the reg. So wait, what did you say? You have sex with a lot of picks, picks or a lot of attractive women on the reg. Show me picks. I show you every girl I fucking talk to, man. Show everybody else. <laughs> Who do you think has sex with more attractive women, me or you? Well, you obviously, but that's you have a you have a bigger sample size. What is it? so? So, like you and I find different girls attractive, though. Like you like the successful, uh, you know, that type older woman maybe, and I like young stupid girls. <laughs> like young stupid girls. <laughs> You don't even know what to say to you anymore, man. There's some people on Twitter giving comments. Uh, Steve Tripp, I'm not sure who that is. How is Star's Red Problem going to fight Kevin McPhee when he's too afraid to show his face or his identity to anyone? Hiding behind keyboard. That's a pretty good point, man. I know. I just got owned. You did. Owned. You did get owned, man. No comment, no comment back to that? No, he's right, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. <laughs> what? I'm not gonna deny it. He's obviously right. I just don't. I don't want to expose myself. That's all there is to it. I just. It's just personal choice. Maybe one day I will. Danny, I will. N, Danny N13 says, "Jesus, have a beer and a shot of Jack and get aggro." That's my fucking boy right there. Maybe. Danny N. He's from where I'm from. Yeah. Yeah, so he's a, he's best kind. Do you think he could, if he needed to buy a mask, to go on the podcast with you? Do you able to get to a store? Or does I don't he, think he, does he live too far away from a store as well? He might. No, yeah. he doesn't. He's in a remote location outside of Mount Pearl. Remote so, location no. outside of Mount Pearl. I see. He's close. Anyways. So awkward, Joe. I no fun hurt. No man, I don't want milks. <laughs> I mean, I like I like my women like y'all like I like my uh, <laughs> I like my women like I like my coffee with a little bit of variety, you know. I like black, I like white, I like Asian, I like dark, I like mixed, I like old, I like young, you know. You can't have it all. I, once I put the spirit hood on, I you know I like a, I like a lot of attractive women. So, Joey, I like, I like my like coffee, coffee like I like my women, hot and black. You've never been a blacker in your life. I know. This guy looks so uncomfortable on the camera. Is such a joke on Twitter. He's, or sorry, is such a joke on Twitter. He looks is such a badass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay, um, I like moron probably too ugly to show his face. This is painful. Everything I read on Twitter now will make me think of what you are like today. <laughs> wow. Owned. Oh. 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 <laughs> Um, Alexo, um, if you're still in the chat, would you be interested in being on a podcast instead? <laughs> or Vince, even Vince. Vince is exciting, man. You'd think Vince is like a big nit, but he's actually not a big nit. Now I'm offended. 
Why are you offended? Because, like, it, this is fucking easy for me. Like, I don't talk to anybody ever, and just because you're a friend, I said, yeah, okay, I'll do it. Now everyone fucking hates me, so whatever. No, 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 come on. They don't, they don't hate you. They just, think, they just think you're quiet. Yeah, I just have, I'm not really angry right now. I, I, I just, no sleep, and I have, like, personal stuff going on, and, like, whatever. I'm just not angry. I'm not really into it right now. I like it. No, some people like you more. See, I think people are going to like you more now. Pe most people, like, you're kind of polarizing in that most people, like, I got so many messages from people, like, who is Stars Rag Problems? Like, who is he? What's his name on Poker Stars? Yada, yada, yada. I got, like, maybe 50 messages in the past six months. And well, a lot of people fucking hate you. Like, they, they think you're, like, one of the most worst people ever. And after they might see this, they might, you know, they might think that, uh, they might think that, no, he's not him. On him. He might think that you're actually not a terrible person, but they find you way less interesting, which is true. That's fine. I'm not even interesting anyways, so that's fine. No, you're very interesting. Come on. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Guys, thanks for going on the live stream. That's it.